Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and it's time for another whiskey tasting. And today, doing a tasting of an Irish whiskey called Limavadi. And as you can tell, I have thoroughly enjoyed this bottle of whiskey. I haven't had this one for very long. This whiskey is the first whiskey I've had in a long time that has urged me to go back to a tumbler because it's just a nice drinking whiskey. Comes in a very interesting bottle. It is now being widely distributed in the United States. It's in the 30 states. Daryl is the um, owner of Limavadi, is going back and forth between Ireland and the US, setting up all of these new locations. And so this is one that you will hopefully be able to find very soon. Comes in a very unique looking bottle, which we'll talk a little bit about. I have an interview with him that I do on Whiskey Lore, the interviews podcast. And so if you want to hear more about his time with Bushmills, he was there 17 years with Dublin Liberties and all about the history of Limavadi. Limavadi is, as you will see here, has a date on there of 1750. And so there is information that points back to distilleries starting around that time in the town of Limavadi. Limavadi is in Northern Ireland. It is actually along that stretch that goes between um, where Bushmills is and the Giant's Causeway over to Derry in Northern Ireland. And that area was known as the Route. And when you see Bushmills and they say that in 1608, that's when the license to distill originated, that license to distill was not just for the farm where distilling may have been occurring at Bushmills, but it also was a license that was good for Limavati and down towards Derry and beyond. So. This is a piece of history that um, once you get in and get into specifics, you start to find out, oh, well, you know, Bushmills, the brand actually didn't come around until 17, 15, what, 17, am I in the right? Uh, yeah, 1784, 1784. So if this was 1750, when there was a distillery in Limavati, then from that standpoint, this would be earlier. Kilbegan is the oldest actual physical um, land that has a distillery on it that, I don't know if I can say that either. That goes to um, 1757. So they have had a presence there for most of that time, although Kilbegan did shut down for some time during the Great Irish Whiskey Depression in the 20th century. So, again, history is complicated. Really cool bottle here. This is a bottle that was designed with history in mind. Daryl wanted to kind of capture the way that they used to blow glass uh, back before... They had gotten into mass production, automated production of glass bottles. And so you see that. You also see some bubbles in there, which is really interesting. Bubbles in the glass. That is not a defect. That was there on purpose. One thing I will say is that this is not the easiest bottle in the world to open unless you know what you're doing. So I'm going to give you a little instruction on how to open this particular bottle before we go in and do a tasting. Take your, do not pull straight up. I did that multiple times. I can tell you that all you end up doing is splashing your whiskey all over the place. You smell like whiskey. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Instead, just take your thumb and you will, actually let me do it with this thumb. And you'll hear a little snap there and it's open and it's out. So just use your thumb to push it up from the sides rather than because it's a it's a glass cork it's a really cool cork but um it's a little snug 
So it will take a little bit of thumb pressure to get that going. All right, so let's talk about this whiskey, what it is, and what we can sort of expect out of it. This is a single malt made just with malted barley. This is from a single distillery because it wouldn't be called single if not. It is aged in bourbon barrels. He sources this whiskey. It's aged in bourbon barrels, and then it's taken from those bourbon barrels, and it is put into PX, Pedro Jimenez, sherry casks. And PX casks are actually sort of unusual for aging whiskey in. They're expensive. They tend to give off a lot of sweet notes. So Oloroso is more prominent. That's the one that's going to give you the raisins and baking spices, all those dark fruits coming in, plum, a fig, that sort of thing. PX is going to give you the brighter fruits. So I sometimes get like berry notes out of it. But, you know, you could also be talking about your, your apples and pears and that sort of thing as well. This whiskey, the prominent fruit note that I get out of this is peach. So I get a, a really nice peach note with a little bit of toasted oak beneath it and some of the barley grain note comes through on this. There's a slight citrus on the nose also, which I would have put down to more of a grapefruit than I would say uh, orange or lemon. The maltiness really comes through on this though. And that's the thing that's gonna transition to the palate. Now, for those of you because PX casks can sometimes be kind of a love or hate thing. PX is usually fairly sweet, but Daryl says he does not put them in those PX casks for very long. So the idea is just get enough in there to get some of the characteristics of it. But let's keep on with that sort of vanilla bourbon note as well and create a really nice balanced whiskey. Cheers. Mm. This whiskey has brought the tumbler back for me because this is just really nice to sip and it is so unique. I can't relate this to any whiskey that I've had it has a lot of grain notes in it. It's a, a nice mouthfeel, a little pepperiness comes in. It's not a hot whiskey, he calls it soft, not smooth, saying soft meaning, yes, you will get some spice on the palate, but it will go down nice and easy, and it does. But there are a lot of flavors going on. I get a little graham cracker note in there. I think that's part of why I obsess over this whiskey a little bit, because I love that graham cracker note. So the graham cracker note is in there, but I'm also picking up vanilla, like a floral vanilla comes in there. Get a little nice heat still remaining on the palate after you're done in the graham cracker note, the honey, that's all still there towards the end. But at the right when it hits your palate and as you're you're drinking it. It's such a full, wide spectrum of flavors that it can be a little hard to pick out exactly what is standing out there. And what I find is that I, I almost get like a banana coming through strongly on that. And so that kind of tropical fruit blends in with all of that, um, Daryl said, so we started talking about Christmas, and I said, that's the time of year when I see this being like the whiskey that I will probably drink it more then than any other time of year, because it reminds me of all those baked goods that you get at Christmas time. And it's not so much the fruit side of things as it is the grain side of things. And that's why I find this so very interesting, because it's not a sweet whiskey, it's not a dry whiskey, 
it's right there in the middle and it's just kind of thick with this grain note. And so it feels like you are drinking a single malt whiskey because there is a huge barley impact on this whiskey for me. I really like this whiskey and I will tell you that when I first cracked the bottle and then drank it, I couldn't quite figure out whether I liked it or not because it was so different. And so it took me a couple of drinks of it and then all of a sudden, I'm going to be honest with you, I couldn't get the cap. I, I was afraid to put the cap back down because I didn't know the secret to popping the cap off. And so I sort of just laid it on top. And, I, and then in your mind, you're like, what am I going to have to sip on tonight? Well, let me get that Lima Vadi because I don't know if I want air getting in too much into that whiskey. So I, I said to Daryl, this might be like the secret weapon to get his bottles uh, consumed. But um, yeah, it, it ended up um, that I worked my way down in that whiskey uh, pretty quickly. And... Um, that is because I just, I shifted from being, I'm not sure about this to, wow, I'm really kind of grave, craving that graham cracker note that is coming through on this whiskey. Really very interesting one. Now actually that I say banana, I actually get some of that tropical fruit on the nose as well on this. But like I say, it's not overly sweet. A little bit of spice in there, baking spice. That sort of thing. So very complex and interesting whiskey. And so at 50 to $55 a bottle, this is a really nice Irish whiskey for you to dip your toe in the water with if you wanted to get a feel for what Irish whiskey is soon to become. Because I taste a lot of the elements that I tasted while on my journey across Ireland in this whiskey. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure to subscribe, like, so that other people will know that uh, you enjoyed this video, and leave some comments below. Have you tried some Irish whiskeys that have opened your eyes to expanding beyond this idea of Jameson Redbreast and Bushmills? I thank you so much for joining me, and uh, until next time, cheers and song du Very good whiskey.